Hello and welcome to our tutorial. I'm Adam Knightley and before we jump into this let me give you a little backstory to what happened. So myself and Seamus Johnson were actually working on this video project for a client. We had this really really cool idea for this panning up shot. We were in some flowers and then when you pulled up you saw this entire garden and it just looked really really cool in our mind so we decided to go out and actually build a camera jib. And uh, we chose to build a camera jib after a really, really cute YouTube chick told us to do it a certain way. And after spending the last 30 bucks in my name, uh, we were able to build it incorrectly. And therefore, we had to um, basically come up with an entirely different way to do it. And after we had figured out this way, we decided to go ahead and make a tutorial. That way, you guys don't have to spend the last amount of money on your name on a jib that doesn't actually work and have to figure it out yourself. So, very first thing we do is we take this bridge JPEG and we drag it directly into the composition. Yes, there are several different ways to do it, and yes, it's the way I chose to do it, so blah, 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 blah. So, the very first thing we want to do after having these in here is we go ahead, we're going to create a new light. So, layer, new, and light. Okay, you can name the light whatever you want. Make sure that the light type is spot. That is an absolute, it has to be that way. We change the cone angle to 180 degrees, color white, and make sure that cast shadows is on. And click OK. Now let's go ahead and create a new camera, which we will use later. Layer, new camera. Make sure it is 35 millimeter. Just leave it named camera one. Click OK. So after that's all taken care of, then we go to layer yet again and we're going to need a solid layer new and solid da, da, da. we make our solid white click OK make comp size OK then we add a grid effect I'll explain what that's for in a second drag it onto the layer what we're doing with this grid is we need to line the solid to the ground so the best way to do that is to go ahead and make it a 3d layer then we need to rotate this layer, so you hit the W key or select the rotate tool and rotate it on its X axis. Then you line it up with the horizon as best as you can. Once that's done, you go ahead and you drag out the length and the width. Now what you want to make sure you do is the very back angles right here they have to come completely out of the entire composition. So go ahead and scale this up appropriately. There you go. Then you duplicate this layer, so a simple Command-D or however you want to do it. Then again, take your Rotate tool and you rotate once again this on its x-axis. And you rotate it so this is at a 90 degree angle or however you choose to do it. Now, you go to our active camera, our 3D view pop-up, and go to top. Now here, you're gonna have to zoom out to see what's going on. Now here is the first solid that we did, and here's the second. What we need to do is we take the second and move it on its Z-axis up to the very back of the first solid and you know fine-tune it a little bit so it's in the exact right spot okay so now we go to our camera you see its position now what we need to do is we need to copy the position from the camera and add it to the light we also need to add it to our bridge picture but we need to make it a 3d layer first so let's do that and since we have already copied it we just go ahead and paste it again so command V and there you go. Okay, so after you apply the position to the bridge JPEG, now we actually have to drag it up on the Z-axis. And I'll explain why in a second. So make sure that you have the bridge selected. Go to its Z-axis and drag it up just a little bit. Now the whole reason why we do this is basically it can't be in the exact same spot as the light for the effect to take the full effect. So now we go back to Active Camera. So now we come back to the Bridge JPEG and we scale the picture down so it fits inside this window. 
Whoops, way too much. Okay, there we go. Now, you go ahead and you hit the A key twice. And that brings up the Material Options menu. So we change the Cast Shadows option from Off to Only, and you do that by clicking it twice. And then we change the Light Transmission up to 100%. Bam. Now we are going to go ahead and select both of the solids. Woot. Now when we do this, we want to go ahead and turn off the effects. What this does is it turns off the grids so we can see better what we're about to do. So both grids are now off. Okay, and with both solids selected, go ahead and hit the A key twice again to bring up the Material Options menu. Now we go to the Accept Lights and click it once to turn it off. Do not drag it because this does something. I'm not entirely sure, but it's going to mess with your final result. So make sure just to click it and it will turn it off for you. And there you go. It looks like we've done absolutely nothing. So now, it is time for us to go ahead and bring in our Null Object. So go to Layer, New, Null Object. Go ahead and make it 3D, save yourself a whole lot of time, and then parent the camera to it. Okay, now that you have the Null Object made, let's go ahead and zoom into it. And I'm going to do this actually by going and hitting the P key to bring up the position. And then going to the very last one, that is our Z axis, and we're going to move in on it. So, bam. Not much, but whatever. And at the same time, while we're still here, we're going to want to move up a little bit. So, we will move in on the Y axis, and we'll start the shot up a little bit. A little more. Okay, that should be just fine. And make sure you hit the stopwatch to turn on the keyframes. Very, very important. So now we advance five seconds in. And since the video is actually five seconds, it actually helps to come back one. So about 4.29 seconds. Okay, so here we bring the camera down. Actually, quite a bit more because we really want to see this movement. Okay, and now we're going to zoom in even more. A little bit more. Okay, that'll do fine. Now we're going to work on the composition settings. So go to Comp, Composition Settings. Then go ahead and jump into the Advanced tab. Now here we go to our options. And instead of Shadow Map Resolution set to Comp Size, we're actually going to go and change it to 2000. Click OK. And click OK again. Then go ahead and make a new comp. And change its width to 1280. And its height to 720. Click OK, and go ahead in your project tab and just drag the bridge into this new comp. So go ahead and scale this bad boy down to fit inside, or basically whatever you want to see, and we'll do that. And there we go. Okay, now after all of that, let's go ahead and treat yourself to a RAM preview. So, zero. Okay, so since this is going to take an exponentially long time, we're going to go ahead and skip this in the video, so you can go ahead and pause now and wait for yours to ram up, or you can just continue watching to see what ours turned out to be. Okay, now that this is ram previewed out, we actually went ahead and moved it, so we could actually just make it look better. The shed here is a little more centered, so uh, you can do that. You don't have to. We did, so there you go. And here's your preview. So it's a very, very simple animation, but it actually really just, it adds a lot to what would otherwise be a boring picture. So since it's not a final Hollywood project until you add a bunch of fake colors, we're gonna go ahead and start on color correction. 
So go ahead and go to layer, new, adjustment layer, and throw on some curves. And the best way to do this is to search for it other than going through all the blah, 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 to get to the blah, blah, blah with the blah, blah, blah. There you go. Okay, so with the RGB already selected, we're going to go ahead and make the brights bright, make the darks dark. There we go. Then we go to our blue channel. Now this one, we actually just come here in the upper right hand corner, make sure we select it, and drag it down a little. And then we come over here and drag it up a little bit. So our shadows are a little bluer and anything that's not shadowed is less blue. Okay, add another adjustment layer. Add another curves. And here, we're just going to drag it down and make it dark. Not too dark. Okay, there we go. Then go to your ellipse tool and double click it. Change the add to subtract. Hit your F key and feather that out. And we're talking a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Whoops. Okay, zoom in again. And now we're going to add an optical flare for flare. So go to layer, new, solid. Go ahead and make it a black solid. Black. Okay, make it comp size just for good measure. Click OK. And here I have to admit, I used a plugin, and I'm sure it's one you all have from Video Copilot. Optical flares. Drag it onto the solid. Okay, so then we have to go into our options. Click it. Go to the light folder. And choose evening sun. That's just so damn romantic. Click OK. So then you go ahead. Make sure that it is selected. Toggle your switches. Change your transfer mode from normal to screen. It's going to get rid of that black for us. There we go. And then we come to our position XY. Hit this little button and actually pick where we want the center of it to go. And we actually want it here in the trees. And after you've done that, you're going to want to go ahead and drag it to the bottom <clears throat> of your layer. So right above the bridge layer and right under your adjustment layer. That way it gets color corrected appropriately. And for our color, we're going to choose a dim orange. And basically just move around in there until you find a color you like. I'm pretty comfortable with that. And so we're going to pump up our brightness to about 130. And here you go, our final finished product. We'll go ahead and render that out for you. And there you go, our finished project. Now this is actually really easy to do and it's a really really good way to make just any ordinary picture pop if you have a shot that you're trying to use for a video and you don't want just the typical slideshow look. This is a really cool original way to make that picture pop and really bring it out. And that's it. So thank you for joining us with our first project. And if you go ahead and you either hit the annotation or the link below, it'll take you to our website. You'll be able to download the project file and find out any settings that we used for this. And of course, the big, big, big thing that we're pushing for right now is we want to hear your ideas, stuff you want to see, projects you wanted to try but didn't know how. Let us know. Give us a little inspiration, and we'll be sure to mention you, your website, your YouTube page, whatever it is you want the little shout out for. We'll be sure to give you credit for giving us the idea. So if you have any ideas, please let us know, and uh, thank you for joining us. See you next time.